Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the singing of the first verse of the National Anthem. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. President of the University. Good morning, Mr. Rector, members of the Board of Visitors, students, colleagues, family, and friends. Welcome to the hottest show in town. Today marks the end of the 193rd academic session. It also mar marks the first time in three years that we've been able to gather on the lawn for this occasion. <laughs> These final exercises are the university's most joyful occasion. This year made all the more so given the sacrifices and challenges you have had to endure these past two and a half years. Today, we are here to confer degrees on the candidates from the College and Graduate School of Arts and Sciences. Tomorrow, we will do the same for candidates from our other 11 schools. <laughs> You're all welcome back tomorrow, too. I'd like to begin by recognizing members of our leadership team who will either be leaving us or taking on new roles at UVA, including Liz McGill, our provost, Alex Hernandez, the dean of the School of Continuing and Professional Studies, Bob Pianta, the dean of the School of Education and Human Development, and Pam Cipriano, the dean of the School of Nursing. Each, each of these leaders has shaped this university in profound ways, and I am grateful for their service. I'd also like to acknowledge some of our student athletes who can't be with us. Members of the baseball team, the women's golf team, the women and men's tennis teams, and the men's lacrosse team are all on the road. And, and for those who are competing today, we wish them the best of luck. Go Hoos. Our music today is provided by the U.S. Army Training and Doctrine Command Band from Fort Eustis, Virginia, under the direction of Lieutenant Colonel Treg Onslaught. Please join me in a round of applause for them, as well as for the members of the Army, Navy, and Air Force ROTC. I'd like to take a moment to congratulate and thank all the parents and grandparents, brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, family and friends in the audience today. To
Together, you have supported our students, your students, in countless ways, including financially, emotionally, and gastronomically. You have helped pay tuition, you have offered encouragement, and you have fed them when they are home on break. This has not been an easy four years for anyone, including all of you. Today is your day, too, which is why I would like to ask our graduating students to stand, turn toward the audience, and give a round of applause to those who helped you on this journey. I'd also like to offer a huge thanks to our incredible staff who work hard all year and then work even harder to make our grounds look especially beautiful for this weekend and to make this ceremony special for all of you. Per <laughs> Particular thanks are due to Pam Higgins who is retiring after more than four decades of service to UVA and who has orchestrated 44, yes, 44 final exercise ceremonies. I'd also like to thank our outstanding faculty who have served not simply as teachers and colleagues, but also as mentors and friends. And I'd ask you to join me in giving both our faculty and our staff one more round of applause. Finally, congratulations to the class of 2022. I hope and trust that you will look back on your time here as among the most important, enjoyable, engaging, and life-changing experiences of your lives. You are leaving this community stronger than you found it, and I have no doubt you will make the world beyond UVA a better place. On a personal note, many of you began your time here in 2018, which is also when I began as president. I know this is a bittersweet occasion for all of you, but it is bittersweet for me as well, made even more so by the fact that you are all graduating and I'm being held back for at least another year. <laughs> more seriously, please know that this class, your class, will always have a special place in my heart. It has been a true joy and a sincere privilege to get to know many of you and to serve as your president. And now let us begin this ancient and honorable ritual through which we shall recognize and welcome you into the company of superbly educated citizen leaders. The Rector of the University. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> what a glorious day to celebrate your graduation. As, as Rector uh, of the University and as a double who myself, and on behalf of my colleagues on the Board of Visitors, uh, we congratulate the graduates of the class of 2022. We honor each of you for your many accomplishments uh, during your years here. You built a solid foundation at UVA, and I believe that will support you for the rest of your lives. We all recognize that your journey to this moment has been a very different and a very difficult one more so than most graduating classes that have preceded you, all because of the pandemic and its impact on all of our lives. Your Zoom classes, the mask, the testing, and your abbreviated on-grounds experience. But there is so much to be grateful for and much to celebrate. <clears throat> You've got your family, and your friends here who have supported you through the years, the faculty who've taught you, and the many staff people who can have contributed to your success along the way here. And this year, I want to thank especially 
the medical staff at the Student Health and in the, and in the Medical Center on your behalf. They too deserve your and our gratitude. And finally, we are grateful for you and the many contributions you have made to this place. Contributions that have maintained and enhanced our university's national prominence. And wish, we wish each of you a meaningful accomplishments and strong and resilient relationships, many of which you have built here. As UVA strives to be a great and good university, uh, we hope you will strive also to be both great and good in whatever your future endeavors may be. Good connotes serving others, and there are so many ways to do that, whatever your pursuits may be. I hope you will find a path of service in some form, because I believe that is where happiness lies, in making a positive difference in, the, in your communities and in the world around you. Your UVA education has helped pave that way. In closing, remember, I love the oft-quoted words of a former editor of the student yearbook, Corks and Curls, 99 years ago. His words remain true to this day. He finished an eloquent piece in that yearbook by writing, I have worn the honor of honors. I have graduated from the University of Virginia. <laughs> so congratulations and best wishes. Now my main duty today is to introduce our keynote speaker and I'm most honored to do so. Our speaker is well known to so many students and alumni in the audience. She's an admired and beloved teacher, a researcher, a writer, and a filmmaker. Much of her work focuses on the history of African American life. The Edwards Detenius Professor and Chair of the Cochran Department of History, Claudrina Harrell, is... She's the author of three books and numerous articles and has co-edited two volumes, one on the legacy of race and inequality in the Charlottesville community in the wake of the white supremacist riots in August 2017. She's written and produced 10 short films with Kevin Everson that have been screened internationally and have garnered critical acclaim. Her films are about African-American life at the university, both currently and historically. Probably the best known is The Black Bus Stop, a short film which depicts black student life on, uh, on the, uh, at a traditional gathering place, now known as The Black Bus Stop on McCormick Road. Her next film project is Pride, which is the name of the newspaper the black student started in the 1970s. Professor Harrell teaches one of the most popular courses at the university, the struggle for social justice and racial equality at the University of Virginia from 1960 to 1995. That course includes students conducting oral histories of alumni and current students and creating an archive of their, of their stories. In her past life, Professor Harrell was a star basketball player. Averaging over 15 points per game, she was a two-time first-team All-Philadelphia Big Five and second-team All-League honoree at Temple University, where she took her undergraduate degree. She was inducted into the Temple Athletics Hall of Fame in 2010. She was also a high-achieving student earning academic all Atlantic 10 honors in her final season. Professor Harrell went on to earn a PhD at Notre Dame University. Please join me in welcoming Professor Harrell. Uh, 
Thank you, Rector Clement, for that generous introduction. To President Ryan, Board of Visitors, Administrators, devoted faculty and staff, and the loving parents, guardians, relatives, and friends of the graduates, it is a privilege and an honor to participate in this joyous occasion. To the members of the magnificent class of 2022, I congratulate you, I salute you, and I commend you on a job well done. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, and what a blessedness it has been to be a part of your educational journey. As I stand before you, I feel not just an unspeakable joy, but a profound gratitude to be in community with you. To celebrate not just your individual accomplishments and achievements, but also your collective gifts, your collective achievements. Achievements that extend beyond grade point averages, fellowships and awards, championship banners, and job placement rates. What you have given the university, the gift of grace, the gift of hope, and the gift of restoration in these trying times cannot be quantitatively measured, but will forever and ever and ever be remembered. When you arrived on grounds in August 2018, you were the calm after the storm. The darkness of the preceding month, the darkness of the preceding summer lingered over us. But your luminous spirit, your luminous presence provided a guiding light as we tended to our mutual woundedness and interdependence. First years, first years. You all were once first years. That descriptive in 2018 seemed so woefully inadequate in capturing what you truly represented. You were the university's new beginnings or what Gil Scott Heron might call the first minute of a new day. So forgive me in advance for departing from the traditional commencement address when the speaker tells you what you must do. Instead, I like to just revel in what you have done. The fruits of your labor bloom and blossom across this university. And because of your brilliance, resilience, and determination, this university stands. This university has remained a site of critical inquiry, knowledge production, scientific innovation, imaginative and life-sustaining art, medical advancement and healing, athletic excellence, and human transformation. For these and many other reasons, you have not only my respect, but my deep admiration. It is an admiration based on real human exchange and forged through our wondrous pursuit of knowledge and truth. Collectively, we have experienced the joy of discovery, the sheer delight of pushing the boundaries of existing knowledge, and the humbling recognition of how much we will never know. Interwoven with our quest for disciplinary expertise, professionalization, and you know, a good job, has been a collective reckoning with the urgency of our contemporary moment. For us, the classroom has been anything but a utopian oasis detached from the real-life dramas of a democratic republic in deep crisis. Instead, the classroom has been a bold experiment 
and shared learning and critical exchange, a place where we confront the realities of the moment, but also imagine, to quote Toni Morrison, the world as it ought to be. Imagining and dreaming of a better world was not always easy, as we witnessed publicly coordinated attacks on the U.S. Capitol. State after state passed restrictive voting laws, rising levels of income and wealth inequality, a media ecosystem that freely circulates weapons of mass distortion, the rise of authoritarian regimes, declining public faith in the scientific authority of medical experts, and a global pandemic that has left millions dead. While navigating these challenges, we have grappled with deep philosophical and ethical questions that get at the heart of the human condition. How do you respond to unimaginable human suffering, loss, and rupture? How do you deal with uncertainty? How do you keep the faith amid human, ecological, and economic calamities? How does one survive in a sea of grief without drowning? If I turn inward and attempted to answer these questions, I would attribute my ability to keep on keeping on to a variety of things. Family and friends, faith, music, Grubhub. <laughs> and my work as a historian of the African American experience privilege with the opportunity to teach and research on the lone black movement towards justice, freedom, and truth. But somewhere in the equation would be you, my students, our students. Thank you for ensuring that the classroom remained a site of transformation and hope. Thank you for ensuring that UVA persisted as an academical village in not only name but also practice. In our shared moments together, particularly after March 2020. I came to appreciate more deeply the power of your presence, the sacredness of the classroom, the worlds made and remade when two or more gather in the pursuit of knowledge, the magic created when we allow the world's greatest scholars, artists, scientists, and writers to transport us to another time and place. I also came to appreciate the beauty of an intense intellectual conversation, when individuals with varying worldviews come together to understand the other person's perspective and the intellectual and spiritual and moral sources of that perspective. Thank you for never losing power never losing faith, excuse me, in the power of ideas and human exchange. Despite balancing your multiple roles and responsibilities as students, as caregivers, and as workers. Of course, your contributions extended far beyond the classroom with fearlessness and selflessness you illuminated those moments when UVA fell short of not just greatness, but goodness. Moved by the political fervor of the times, you tackled a variety of issues. Rising tuition costs and student debt, campus policing, the university's relationship to the local community, the changing pattern of work, and the increased precarity and vulnerability of essential workers. In doing so, you all provided a model of democracy in action and reminded us that democratic renewal requires us to, us to subject our ideas, our beloved institutions, and even our most cherished traditions to scrutiny. Whether critiquing the historic landscape, calling for the renaming of buildings, or pushing to inscribe your own notions of justice and fairness in the honor code, you have sought to not only right perceived wrongs, but you have sought to recreate community. 
In her book, Our Declaration, a reading of the Declaration of Independence in Defense of Equality, political theorist Daniel Allen argues that, quote, the point of political equality is not merely to secure spaces free from domination, but also to engage all members of a community equally in the work of creating and constantly recreating that community. 52 years ago, President Edgar Shannon echoed similar sentiments to the graduating class of 1970. That spring semester had been marked by political upheaval. It was hotter than today. As students registered their critique with the ongoing war in Southeast Asia and the murder of four students at Kent State. Not content with simply challenging the war in Vietnam, student activists addressed larger issues facing the university including its integration of women and African Americans into the student body politic, and its commitment to improving the economic conditions of workers on grounds. Feeling the weight of weeks of intense student organizing, as well as facing fierce criticism from lawmakers in Richmond, President Shannon cautioned against tethering the college's vision of the future to old paradigms and formulations. We cannot return to the good old days, Shannon declared, nor should we want to. And looking to our future here within the University of Virginia, we must avoid, I think, too much use of slogans about the old university and the new university. Sloganeering is a poor substitute for hard thinking. Thank you, but that is, that's still Edgar Shannon. <laughs> He's gonna talk for one more sentence. We must continue to be a true university that provides freedom and opportunity. Freedom and opportunity, freedom and opportunity. Now, now it's me. Freedom and opportunity cannot thrive under the weight of orthodoxy, rigidity, and dogmatism. Mm -hmm. Growth, institutional and individual. Growth, institutional and individual, requires regeneration and renewal. And this brings me to the only advice that I will provide on this sweltering hot day. Don't be afraid to depart from the script. The script, the one you write, and the one others will attempt to write for you. Life is a series of promising starts, unexpected disruptions, dashed expectations, and beautiful surprises. Unexpected change and departures from the script have marked my adulthood. Upon graduating from high school, I left Jacksonville, Florida. Let's go! <laughs> it's always one. Yeah. It's always one from Duval. I left Jacksonville, Florida for Philadelphia, where I enrolled at Temple University and played on the women's basketball team from 1994 to 1997. Go Owls! Everything about the experience was transformative. And there are so many memories just seared in my mind. Walking down Philadelphia and hearing the roots for the first time. Not the salad, but the band. Traveling to Harlem with the poet Sonia Sanchez, who annually financed a day trip to the Schomburg Library for her students. Seeing Alan Iverson, the answer, play for the first time. And listening to one of basketball's greatest minds, John Cheney, talk up matchup zone and how to cultivate a critical self. And then there were the heated debates about everything, from philosophy to hip hop to politics. So invigorating were the intellectual conversations within and beyond the classroom that my love for athletic competition faded tremendously. There was more to life, I thought, than 6 a.m. workouts, wind sprints, afternoon practices, wind sprints, and late night bus rides to and from arenas. So I revised the script and I graduated early. The decision was exhilarating and frightening, sort of like giving a graduation speech before thousands of people. After my bridge year, 
which consisted of teaching math and science to middle schoolers. I enrolled in the PhD program in history at Notre Dame. In the last year of my doctoral studies, I applied for a series of professorships at colleges and universities across the country. The decision to apply to UVA was very last minute. The application was due on December the 1st. I mailed it off on November the 30th. It seemed like a long shot. But to my surprise, I received an interview and eventually a job offer. After accepting the position, I received many notes of congratulation, but there was one note of warning. The University of Virginia, I was told, was a conservative place, steeped in tradition the land of frats and floral dresses. And perhaps I should consider another university. In other words, I was not a good fit. Despite the warnings, I accepted the job because I needed a job. <laughs> and that decision remains one of the best decisions of my life. But the journey here has been anything but predictable. There have been roadblocks, unplanned exits, and unexpected detours. Of course, not all detours are bad. Some provide redirection from dangerous and hazardous routes. Some detours open us to new possibilities. That was the case with a detour that has become the center of my academic joy, Black Fire, a film series and a lecture course that explores the richness and the fullness of the black experience at the University of Virginia. Over the past decade, I've collaborated with my colleague, Kevin Everson of the art department on a series of short films that combine historical research with, a cre with creative practice to highlight the rich tradition of political protest at the University of Virginia, to celebrate the women and men who build vibrant social and cultural institutions like Black Voices and the Black Student Alliance, and to also confront the hard truths many, the, and, and also to confront the hard truths of the past and the present. I also teach a lecture course that explores many of the themes and topics in the film. It opens in the 1960s, focusing on how the civil rights movement transformed UVA, and it closes with the Unite the Right rallies of 2017. The topics are wide ranging. We explore politics, sports, religion, Greek life, major trends in higher education. We talk about the corner. We talk about rugby road. It is the most self-centered class you could absolutely teach at UVA. But one important feature of the class is guest lectures from UVA alumni who share stories of the political battles won and lost and the vibrant social and cultural worlds they created. For the students, there is something deeply transformative about close contact with the people who shaped the landscape they are traversing. Because of their encounters with the past, students think more deeply about their own legacy and the institutional inheritance of the next generation. As the semester progresses, two questions emerge in conversations and assignments. How will I be remembered? How will we be remembered? And for what will we be remembered? Perhaps those questions have lingered in your thoughts over the past few days. It's only natural. Commencement invites both celebration and reflection. I've certainly done a lot of reflecting on your remarkable journey and how you responded to the unprecedented challenges without a blueprint and without a guide. Please know that I feel incredibly blessed to have lived and learned in your presence. Your sacrifice, your patience, your hard work, and your generosity serve as perfect reminders that transformative learning involves, to borrow from the historian Vincent Harding, not just the sharing of information, but the sharing of life. And that's what you've done here at the University of Virginia. You've not only pursued your dreams and aspirations, but you've shared your life. And for that, I am eternally grateful, and the university is immensely better. Class of 2022, thank you for the gift of grace, the gift of restoration, the gift of fellowship. And on a more personal note, thank you for the gift of friendship. 
Congratulations on a job well done. Godspeed. President of the University. Uh, thank you once again, Professor Harold, for that spectacular speech. I think it deserves one more round of applause. <laughs> All of today's graduating students have chosen to study the arts and sciences, whether in the college or in the graduate school. In doing so, they have affirmed their commitment to discovering the truth and leave here prepared to be citizen leaders in a world that desperately needs them. Some of today's graduating students have earned further distinction by completing their degrees early. 183 students from the College of Arts and Sciences earned their baccalaureate degrees in three years, and eight more college students did so in only two years. I know. In recognition of their effort and as a symbol of their achievement, these students are wearing orange stoles today. Will those of you who are graduating early please stand so we can give you a well-deserved round of applause. I would also like to recognize the 575 students who are the first in their families to graduate from college this weekend. As a fellow first generation student myself, I greatly admire your accomplishments. And I'd ask that, could we please give one more round of applause to these students and those who helped them reach this milestone. <laughs> All of today's degree candidates are listed in the digital program, including those who completed the requirements for their degrees in December or last August. For the candidates from the College and Graduate School of Arts and Sciences, we will award 3,213 total degrees, including 2,822 bachelor degrees, 224 master degrees, and 167 PhDs. The Dean of the College and Graduate School of Arts and Sciences will now present the candidates for degrees. Under authority vested in the general faculty and delegated to me, I will then award the degrees. And immediately after these exercises, department graduation ceremonies will take place around grounds and the locations for these are listed in the finals program. The Executive Vice President and Provost of the University. I have a very lengthy speech. The Dean of the College and Graduate School of Arts and Sciences. <laughs> the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Master of Fine Arts, Master of Arts, Master of Science, Bachelor of Arts, for Bachelor of Science, will please rise and remain standing. <laughs> Mr. President, I have the honor to present these candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Master of Fine Arts, Master of Arts, Master of Science, Bachelor of Arts, or Bachelor of Science. I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Master of Fine Arts, Master of Arts, Master of Science, Bachelor of Arts, or Bachelor of Science, with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging. I charge you to pursue truth in all your endeavors and to apply the knowledge you have gained in ways that advance the social good.
Congratulations. The graduates of the College and Graduate School of Arts and Sciences will please be seated. The Chair of the University of Virginia Alumni Association Board of Managers. Congratulations, Class of 2022! Let's go! It's an honor to be standing before you. My thanks to the Board of Visitors, President Ryan, and the entire UVA faculty for this invitation to address you. I'm Tom Mangus, College of Life, Arts and Sciences, 1990, a history and economics major, a former RA, a Beta Theta Pi, and married to another UVA alumna. Now I am chair of the University of Virginia Alumni Association Board of Managers, let me officially welcome you to your alumni status. Since 1838, the UVA Alumni Association has nurtured bonds among who's, who's at heart and the university, connecting, informing, serving, celebrating, and investing in you and our university. Today, you will become part of the UVA alumni family for the rest of your lives. A vibrant, inclusive, and growing 250,000 alumni community that stands ready to help you remain engaged with the university in the years ahead. I invite, invite you now to explore ways you can stay connected to UVA, even as you are just preparing to leave. Whether building new networks on Wahoo Connect, coming back to grounds for young alumni reunions or home football games, or joining in-person and online one-to-one -one professional advising and networking events, no matter where in the world you live. Over the years since I walked this same ground, I've had the opportunity to come back to UVA to recruit fourth years to join the companies that I'd worked for, make presentations based on my professional experiences to the economics department and to the McIntyre School, mentor undergraduates, cheer our teams to win national championships, Provided, provide advice to mid-career UVA alumni to help guide their next steps, raise money for the university, fund bicentennial and Blue Ridge scholarships, invest in university innovation through the Jefferson Trust, see one of my children graduate from university, and of course, reconnect with old friends at reunions and frankly across the world. Finally, I've had the deep honor to work along many new friends at the Alumni Association Board of Managers, its staff, to truly strengthen the bond among alumni and between alumni and the university. I can tell you from my own experience, your connections to UVA will only strengthen over time. If you give yourself permission, your enduring connectedness to this university can and will continue to enrich your lives in ways you cannot imagine now and through the future. Congratulations, class of 2022. Thank you very much, and wahoo wah. The president of the university. Okay, we're getting there. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mangus. We are incredibly fortunate to have a strong and tight-knit community of alumni whose time on grounds profoundly shape their lives. And I'm grateful that so many of those alumni have done so much to give others the same experience and have offered me all sorts of unsolicited advice about how to run UVA. <laughs> those of you who graduate today have benefited from the generosity of alumni, parents, and friends in ways large and small. And I'd like to thank all of you who have joined this tradition of paying it forward by contributing to your class gift. Before I offer a few closing remarks, I'd like to say a final thank you to our Grand Marshal uh, and to all of today's speakers and performers. And I hope you'll join me in a round of applause. So at this point, I recognize I'm the only person keeping you from your school ceremonies, celebrating with your family and friends, and or finding air conditioning. 
which is why I'd like to spend the next 30 minutes or so talking about 10 global challenges and how your time here has prepared you to meet them. I'm kidding, though I do believe your time here has prepared you for many of these challenges. What I'd really like to do is leave you with one simple request, which is to remember what happened here. When I say that, I'm not just talking about remembering a specific class you took or an event that happened, although I do hope you remember these. Instead, I'd like you to remember the feeling of being here, in this place, with these people, and carry it with you. Remember what it felt like to be surrounded by a diverse group of fellow students who were as compassionate as they were talented. Remember what it felt like to explore in ways you never had before and to learn from professors who loved a subject so much you couldn't help but get excited about it too. Remember what it felt like to live with your friends. You don't need a lot of friends in life, but you do need some rock solid ones. And I trust you've met some of them here. Remember what it felt like to build bridges, reaching out to get to know someone or someplace different and how it ended up changing you. Remember what it felt like when the men's basketball team won the national championship. Remember how it felt to serve others and the satisfaction that came from devoting your time and energy to something bigger than yourself. Remember how it felt to be part of a community that faced down a once in a century pandem pandemic and how together you helped each of us through. Remember what it felt like to live in a community of trust. Remember the feeling of being a Wahoo, but keep in mind that most people you meet outside of this place will have no idea what that means. <laughs> if you remember all of this, I have no doubt that you will carry the very best of this place with you as you face with courage and purpose the beautiful, joyous, challenging, sometimes tragic, but ever magical road ahead. And should that road ever lead you back to Charlottesville, and I hope it will, please know we'll leave the lights on for you. So congratulations, class of 2022, and best of luck. Due to the heat today, we're following the inclement weather plan all department ceremonies have been moved inside this afternoon. The times and locations of the department ceremonies can be found on page 11, 10 and 11 of your program. The department ceremonies will begin after graduates and their guests have ample time to reach their ceremony sites. If your ceremony is scheduled to begin at 1 p.m. or sooner, please proceed there directly. Graduates, please stand now for the singing of the good old song. Yeah. 